Hello and welcome back to Beagle Bat Reps. I'm Martin and this week it's what's on Beagle Bat Reps goes to the LGT. Okay, so me and the guys have just got back from LGT from this year. So this year, myself, Ben, Paddy and George all went up to the London Grand Tournament in London. Um, so I took myself, I took myself, I took the Corn Demons, the new codex. Ben took the Ultramarines, Paddy took Tyranids and George went with Drakari. So this is just a run through of how the weekend went. Results, etc., etc. So, um, me and Ben had, well, I had the weird idea this week, well, this year, to go up on the Friday and do the doubles event, which is three games, doubles. So, what did me and Ben take? We thought it would be a good idea to take 21 Ultramarine Land Speeders. Um, so, as you can see in the photo now, it's literally two outrider detachments led by a librarian and a tech marine. And there's just a mix of all the land speeders we got on the shelves here. All just WYSIWYG. Literally just a shithouse list for fun and giggles, basically. Um, it did not do well at all. But everyone loved it. Everyone. There's lots of people coming by, taking photos, commenting on it, loving it. Um, and I think it's, it was a perfect, perfect kind of event to take that sort of list to. Um, there wasn't no ITC points or nothing like that for that event. So it's literally, why not have some fun with it? And yeah, um, so on Friday, we got, I picked Ben up bright and early Friday morning, drove up to London, got up there for 12 o'clock and our game one was meant to be Imperial Knights. Imperial Knights? Imperial Guard, um, but they dropped out, so we then got paired into Game 1 with Custodies and Space Wolves, led by Martin and Peter. Um, so yeah, Game 1 with the Land Speeders, we gave it our best shot. <laughs> um, some of the rogues did have come off, and but yeah, time three onwards, it just all fell apart which then gave me and Ben a good idea of how this list was going to play for the, next, for the rest of the evening. So we lost the first game, but it was a good laugh for the guys. Um, so before this event, I played the land speeder for a battle port on the channel against Custodes. And that was the only time we've used all the land speeders. So now it's two games, both from Custodes. So we go into game two, and what do we get? Custodies for the third time for the last readers. So this time it was Custodies and Blood Angels. So it's still Space Wolves, Blood Angels for game two. Um, and this was with Ben and Michael. And mission was Data Stry Salvage. Um, in the Blood Angels side of this, we had lots of incursors, eliminators, and lots of forward deploying. So literally, pre game. All the objectives in the middle was already had units on. So all trains had first turn. We gave our best shot to get everything off the objectives turn one. We did not. In comes the custodies on jet bikes and the land speeders. Turn two, we have hardly anything left. Um, very fast game. <laughs> um, but land speeders are not very good. Um, but highlight of that match was Mephisto 
dying on Overwatch to a scout. Scout sniper. Done a mortal wound and killed Mephisto on one wing charged in. So, yes. Um, so, going to game three then of the Friday Night Doubles. And this time it was against a boyfriend and girlfriend or husband and wife, I can't remember. Sorry. Um, called Michael and Layla. So they was there just for the Friday night doubles for 40k. And there's one in Sisters and Imperial Knights. Um, interesting enough, they was actually playing in the main event. They was actually then going and playing Kill Team. They are literally just doing a doubles together for a bit of fun. Um, so, by this time of the day, Game 1 and Game 2, I took the lead basically with the army, Ben. So game three, I literally just sat down. I was like, Ben, you take control. I'm just going to sit here and just roll some dice. Um, but yeah, it was a fun game. Um, we lost again because of speed is. Um, but yeah, it was not a good idea to take so many of It was a lot of shit and giggles, but the army just does not stand up to anything. There's no object in it. You can't hold objectives. Second days are very hard, but um, so yeah, we lost all three games on Friday night for the doubles. I didn't mind so much because I just knew it was just what it was. Bit of laugh, but I think it did have a bit of a negative effect on Ben going into the main event for a Saturday morning, which was not so good. Um, despite my efforts to tell you to not to worry. So. We're going to the main event. So, I'm just going to talk about how I've got on in the main event. The other guys will try and maybe get some content out with how they got on and their social medias. But. So, for the main event this year, I was running Chaos Demons with Mono Corn Detachment, they say. So, my list was a single battalion. I had a Budfuster in it as my Warlord with a 5 up field no pain and the other one to. Ignore hit and wound modifiers and plus one damage. I then also had Bellacor in it. I had Scarbrand in it. And I had Skulltaker. I then had ten, five units of ten blood letters. And one unit of four blood crushers. And that was a list. All painted and very nicely as corn. No famous, because we're not dirty. So, game one... I was up against Andrew and his Death Guard. The Death Guard list on paper, you're very, very strong to me. Because obviously, Death Guard reduces all damage by one. Blood letters are all two damage swords. So I was like, Blood letters are not going to be my friends here. But he had just loads of Plague Marines, Terminators, and all sorts. Um, luckily, I had, I managed to Deep Strike. Budfaster and Scarbrand in, room six of the Death Guard next to Bellacor. And I got the turn two charge off of Skullbrand into the Death Guard Terminators. And luckily, Scarbrand picked them all up in one go, and then he pretty much left one alive, and then ran away. Um, after that, it was very hard for the Death Guard to come back. But Andrew did try his best and get what points he could out of it. Uh, Andrew's good as gold. We really good game. Um, make sure you check him out on social media. Um, he is on one of the, go on our social media on Instagram. We got posts for all the games and quite a few of them have commented and stuff so you see their armies. So, um, so game one was a win for Demons. So I was quite happy. So now I go into Game two of the day. Turn it up and I have Grey Knights. Obviously Grey Knights and Demons is you know. Um so game two is against Paul from Wales. I think it's Vale Renegades or Renegades. Can we come on for wrong? Um but we turned up the table and I gambled Prim Bellacor right on the front line hoping for first time. Just put the pressure on right early because obviously Grey Knights have a lot of mortal wounds. And I was like, if I sit back, get them again positioned too much, it's going to make it very difficult later on in the game. So start better call out in the open. 
did not get a first turn. Koyanotti got first turn. Taylor Paul, Grandmaster in my face. In turn one, Bayer calls alive on one wound. One wound. Just. Um, so very, very hard. Obviously, turn two, then Bayer called just died to smites. Um, I tried my best to get what points I could, but the amount of mortal wounds coming out for the Grey Knights, like at one point, uh, Eli Brown managed to do like 12 mortal wounds. So just like a brother letter unit just gone. Nothing I can do about it, just mortal wounds off through the table. Um, Scarbrand and Bradfaster also like came in, fell charges, and just died in the return turn through mortal wounds and number of weight of dice through attacks. Bit rubbish, really. Um, but yeah, it could have gone the other way with stronger, maybe first turn, and some charges going off and stuff like this. But um, Paul was good as gold, top broke. Um, so that was game two, so one win, one loss. So going to game three, and I rocked up to the tape. So end of game two, obviously last year LGT, me and Paddy faced each other. So he's keeping an eye on the scores. We was both on the same amount of points with one win, one loss. And I was like, I don't want Ty, I don't want Ty Rant, I don't want you. Um, luckily, I avoided Paddy, just. So Paddy was on the table next to me. So we literally, it was, I think it's just random luck we missed each other. Frank Faye. So turn up and I have Orcs for game three. And I was like, Orcs, okay. I know Orcs. I can deal with this. How wrong I was. Um, so I definitely underestimated the Orcs. Especially with the new raw abilities, with the involve and the plus one strength. Um, I threw Bellacor away, turn one. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I under, I knew what I was thinking. I was trying to basically block the whole army in because there was just one small gap you could get through. So I was hoping I could charge Bellacor, stop the gap, and put the pressure on turn one. I failed like a four inch charge. With reroll, did not go well, and then Bellacor literally got sworn by the whole army of orcs and died. Um, so I was like, "Fuck, I've messed up here." Um, so I lost that game. Um, and it's pretty down to me. I fucked up on that one. Um, so I was a bit pissed off myself. I think I could have won that game if I played it differently, holding back and waiting. Do strike really with everything. Um, one thing I did notice though, like with Brock Letters being strength five and Orcs being toughness five, the amount of runes I was getting through is nowhere near what I should have. And then with the wild invoke saves, it made it even harder. And then with my demon save, even being five, I think combat Brock Letters, Brock Letters just being picked up easy. So, um, yeah, so I was a bit annoyed myself for that one. So that was game day one done for Saturday. So Saturday evening, me, Paddy, George and Ben all went out and got drinks. Um, so end of day one as well. Paddy had only won one game and lost two. George had only lost, lost one one game and lost two. And Ben had lost all three. Um, we also had like people down our end. Jake from Vanguard only won one, lost two. Um, I think Mikey from Hellstorm was the same. There's a bit of controversy with his, which I'm sure you see on his social media. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of players like end of day one on two losses, one win. And it was weird. The playing field was just hard, very hard compared to the previous year. Um, and we spoke about it a lot and it was just like, how are we doing this? I know like... George, both his losses was against Necrons. Necrons are very strong at the minute. Um, but yeah, all of us said, like, it's just weird how a lot of people are struggling this year with us. So, going to Sunday, game four, and I have Imperial Knights, I've seen the night before. So, done some research, I was like, oh, it's like 11 small knights, one big one. All of the small ones got loads of different buffs and it's uh, army, it was army renowned 
pretty much free breed. So lots of different varieties on all of them. Um, so I turn on the table and uh, the guy that's facing him is called Thomas. And he's from the WTC Denmark team. He, he said he was the team captain. So I was like, huh, this could be interesting. Um, I was very aware if I did, did it, do the damage when I could come down and survive. The return of fire would hit me very hard. Um, Thomas was very open and said, like, if you hit me, it will be game over because you'll just walk through my nights. So I feel I'll, I got town one. I held back, waited. Knights just moved into positions and stuff. I pulled Bellicle out, dropped down Scarbrand, dropped down Bradfaster, got more charges off. All good, happy days. Scarbrand and Bellicle both picked up Knights easy, ignoring the rules. Bradfaster bounced off a fourth involve Knight. I could only be here on force. Um, and then into Thomas's turn two. And oh my days, I've never seen dice roll spike so much in one way. So, turn two, I did not make one save for Scarbrand or the Brent Faster. Not one. Even Command Pointed it, did not make a single save. And how did the Knights shooting get on? Max shots. Pretty much hitting and ruining everything. I think it took two small knights to kill Bloodfaster, and then the rest just killed Scarbrand. I couldn't believe it. Even Thomas against me was just like, I don't know what to say. I was just like, oh, well, that's that. <laughs> um, so Thomas being the good goal went and got me a beer because I needed it at that point. Um, so right there, we could tell the game was Get me for Thomas. But I did manage to pull it back with charges off with like Skull Taker, Blood Letters, scored what points I could to bring the score up to I think it was 83 60 or something, I guess. Um, so I closed the gap despite not having my big bads. Um, but yeah, Thomas was a very good sport. One of my favourite opponents over the weekend. Um, you could tell he plays at a very high professional level by how he conducts himself, how he played, um, as well as I like, check in, did I want to do this, did I want to do that? And yeah, super guy, very enjoyable to play against. But again, that just shows how it was, like two wins, one loss from Saturday, going to Sunday, and I'm facing a DOTC team captain. <laughs> it just showed the level of players this year. Um, so yeah, three losses, one win at a point. So going to the last game of the weekend for me, which is so against a guy called Frank. I think he is part of Deep Games. Um, and he had Ultra Wings. Um, I have to say, I did not enjoy this game. Um, there's a lot of th things that happened that I... Did a like you want to I'm not going to go into it all full detail in here because it's gone, it's done, it's over, and yeah, I'm just going to move on and forget it. Me, but it was a good game. Um, there's a lot of things that happened. Um, I've gone into it with like the local people back guys and stuff like that and talked about it, and um, yeah, it's just one of those things basically. But it was, I gave in the end, I ended up just giving the game away and just ending it as soon as I could um, make that what you will yeah so finish on the losses as well, there as well and at that point I was just happy to just get off the table and get home and obviously um, I don't know if it was just like me because it was either French or Spanish it was translation wasn't there but there's a couple of disagreements rules and stuff like this um, but yeah I finished Still on then one win, four losses for the main event. Um that point yeah, I haven't got any like good placings for demons this year. I literally just took them to see how I'd get on. Um it's safe to say I am disappointed with how I got on. Um but I could tell like 
after day one, I was getting struggle. Um, the demon list wasn't as good as I thought it was. And the level of praying was a lot higher than I expected. Um, positives alone, like I face people from three different countries. So I face Welsh, um, Danish and Spanish or French. Was. Um, but there's a lot of foreign players that's coming over this year. Obviously, that's how it impacts since last year. Last year, obviously, there's COVID passports and stuff like that you needed. This year is more open. And you can tell there was a, lots and lots of high level players. I mean, an event on Saturday it was like 730 players or something like this. So, big, big event. Obviously, everyone's there for the points and want to do well. Um, but yeah, highlight for me over the weekend was probably just doing doubles with the land speeders in the end, just for a laugh and like the comments we got. Um, the main event has slightly put me off competitive 40k at that sort of level. Our local events down here, good as gold, but going to the WTC or whatever it is, events, you can tell like the amount of prayers and the style people pray is a lot different than you do in your local tournaments and stuff like this. Um, that's no disrespect to anyone who plays at that sort of level and like that's how they enjoy the game. But f for me, like I want to have a good time. It is a game at the end of the day. I'm not there just to get the win. And I felt like at the event, you could tell there's quite a lot of people not ones I face necessarily, but just in general, you can tell there's a lot of players there just for the wins. And they didn't really care if they had fun or not. It's just like, it's a bit weird. Um, had it off quite a few other people as well. There's obviously some disagreements with TOs and stuff like this over the weekend as well, which is a shame. i say last year's, I enjoyed it a lot more than I did this year. Has it put me off going next year? I don't know. I think I'll only go next year if a group of my Beagle Back Rev guys wants to go as well. If there's only like two of us, I probably won't be that much keen to go. Um, it's always good to go just see all the community though. That's one of the highlights of the weekend as well. Um, always good to catch up with Jake from VT um, and Dom from Real Space, also VT as well. Um, also, we get a lot of people approach us say they watch the videos, like the content, and stuff like this. So that's always good to see and good to know. And I like the fact we go up and we represent ourselves. Obviously, we're down in Cornwall away from the major part of the community, middle of England. So I think it's always good that a group of us go and we do represent Beagle Back Reps, show our face. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes on to next year. Has... It has put a little bit of damping on it for me, in all I've seen, compared to his race. Um, I've, I don't know if I just hold off till 10th edition now or not. We'll see. Um, other thoughts. So, that's all done, dusted. I finished bottom in the end, because of the last game. Ben finished above me. Um, Paddy finished on two wins, three losses. And George finished on three wins, two losses. Um, so it's not so bad for like George and Paddy, but I think Ben was very happy just gives one win. That's what he wanted. I was glad he got that because um, he was getting a bit down over the weekend because obviously he played a lot of games from the Friday to Saturday to Sunday. And he was getting a bit on for him, I think. So it's good that he got a win. Um... So onwards now, so end of October, we have Mad for Minches event that I'm running. And then also, I've now started, well, they put it out. I'm going to start teaching 40k to people in Cornwall. So if you're in Cornwall and you want to learn how to play 40k or you never played it, you can come here, play with one of our, our armies every week and I'm going to do like, a three hour every week, Wednesday, Wednesday evenings, teaching 40k and helping learn the rules correctly, playing in missions, using objective markers, 
and just helping people get into the community down here with bit more. I think that's where I enjoy the game more. This is the community bit of it, less than the competitive side. It's not to say I'm not going to do it again. Probably will after I've had a little bit of a break from it. But yeah. Um, that's about it for London, really. I was just going to do a lot of like blogging content when I was up there. Obviously, it was so hot inside, and we were so like stressed out, all of us up there, just trying to get to the games. It literally, I just yeah, I had no time to record up there, really. But I've seen, you've seen all the photos. Um, but that's about it for this year's LGT. Um, so it's not as good as news as we was hoping for, but it is what it is. Um, so if you like what we do, make sure you go check out all our social medias, it does help us out. Especially on like Instagram, Facebook, and obviously YouTube. Make sure you hit all the likes and subscribes and the follow buttons. And yeah, that's about it for this week. So thanks for all following us. Thanks for all the support and the comments we got leading up to LGT. And better luck next year, let's hope. Until next time, cheers and gone.